Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to do a use all this stuff that we use for media ministry and actually live stream or Zoom a wedding. So let's go. folks, AJ the CEO here. Just first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. Now, first off, I need to apologize for taking so long with this. I actually did a Zoom wedding like in November, but then just everything kind of went crazy, wasn't feeling good and all this other stuff. And then um, I'm supposed to be on vacation, but I had a bunch of people reach out and I'm like, you know, I need to finish knocking this out. So my apologies for taking so long in doing this video. I wanted to talk through what I did because we're still in COVID season or whatever. And I had um, uh, someone reach out to me, ask me to run a wedding. And thankfully, I had all this equipment. I ended up having to get something else to do it. But I want to walk you through exactly what I did and what I used to actually make this wedding work. Now, before I start, I will list down below everything that I used to actually get this done. Um, mainly, it's going to be all the heavy lifting is going to be on a laptop and the A10 Mini. So let's go. All right, so the very first thing is I went on site to where the wedding was going to be, and I needed to verify a few things, just like I would do at church. I needed to verify, do they have an Ethernet connection or do they offer public Wi-Fi in the area? Now, by, by doing that, no matter which one it is, I needed to take my laptop or some type of device with me and connect to it and then do a speed test because we are concerned about the upload speed. All right, so we're leaving the ballroom and internet is fine. They actually have a uh, network there. Might use that as a backup, but my tether, I have great speed, so we should be good to go. Um, just need to plan out what equipment I'm gonna use to record the wedding, and that's about it. So ethernet, Wi-Fi through the hotel, as well as hotspot through my phone worked. So boom. Internet connection is fine. Now, in this setup, um, I also need to find where my placement was, pretty much because everybody still had to stay uh, six feet away from each other. I was placed right in the back, so I lined up a table so that I was using my Sony camcorder, and I was all the way in the back, and I could zoom in. Now, you also got to think... In this setup, I'm using the ATEM Mini because that would have been the easiest thing, but I did bring my UTAP as a backup just in case if we had any issues. Again, contingency plans. I have my Rode video mic, which was on top of my camcorder to get environmental sound, but I also used a Rode Wireless Go that was on the officiant. So I put that on her, which will pick her up and hear the bride and groom talk. And then I just balance the sound and the volume between when we actually get into the actual wedding compared to when I need to interact and bring people in and out. So really straightforward. So I had two sound sources, shotgun mic to get everybody. I'm all the way in the back, picked up everybody fine. But when people started talking, I cut over to the wireless go that was clipped onto the officiant's robe. So it was able to pick up everybody. Now, because I don't like doing everything just bare minimum and stuff like that, we went ahead and designed through Canva a nice, pretty wedding type of background with the name of who was getting married, the date and time and stuff like that. So I put that on the media inside of the ATEM, loaded it directly to the ATEM under the media player so that when everybody was joining the Zoom, I was able to just bring that up so people knew what it was. And then I would cut over to HDMI input one when the wedding actually started. Now, I only did this with one camera. I wanted to do two, but I just didn't have the cables or the equipment or the converters to have another camera in the front and all this other stuff like that. So this is very simple how we had to set up. Now, all of that was being routed into my Lenovo laptop 
actually the Wi-Fi kind of went out. So that's why I'm glad I went and tested it early. It went out. It wasn't able to support because I guess everybody was trying to stream at the same time while the um, couple and the wedding planner wanted me to do it. So I ended up having to cut over to my phone as a hotspot. And that's how I was connected over another USB cable from my phone to my laptop, which made it show up as an actual network connection, um, even though it was a hotspot. So that's how I was able to connect to Zoom. Zoom saw the A10 Mini like it was just a webcam. And then I just did a little production, just like I would do in church service. And as long as I manage people jumping in and trying to cut their video in and stuff like that, it went very, very easy. Um, I would say it was a lot easier compared to doing that than it was a regular church service. But these same skills is what was used for this. So um, really short video. But again, people ask me what I did. And that's what it did. And like I said, I cut over video on of the wedding and what I did and everything like that. So hopefully that helps. Really didn't have to do anything. I mean, obviously, I needed a laptop because I didn't have one. Um, now, the good thing about this is if I was able to connect over the Ethernet and I could have done all of this just through the ATEM itself if I had had it pre early pre-programmed to go to like Vimeo, Facebook or something like that, still could have done the exact same thing. But hopefully uh, with the stuff I talked about, it gives you an idea of what you can do. Really, really not that difficult to do. And if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> So if you have any other questions, please leave them down below. I try to get through all the comments. And for some reason, I don't get all the com I don't get notified that I get all the comments. Um, we're over 650 videos. So please bear with me if you sent me a comment and I didn't get a chance to respond to it because it's a lot of comments to get through. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. I want to thank the patrons and the YouTube members for making this video possible. Their names are on the screen right now. And remember folks, you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month or a YouTube member by clicking the join button below. Either way, you're helping us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ, and we will see you on the next video. Later.